check out BigBadToyStore.com for this and other great toys. And now it is time for the grand finale. Now that we've seen all five of Fans Project's Motor Squad, now it's time to combine the five into the massive, what they are calling M3, which stands for the Motor Squad Military Multiplexer. Um, I know at one point they were calling him Intimidator, and I like that name a lot better, but I don't know. Maybe they were worried NASCAR was going to sue them or something. I don't know. So they just went with M3. All right, whatever. But, um... Yeah, we're going to get down to it. Now, if you missed any of the reviews of the five Nut Stunt accounts, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to post uh, links to all of those videos in the description below. So check that out if you didn't get to see any of those videos. But this is solely going to focus on the combination. So we'll get right down to it. So we're just going to start ripping stuff off a of diesel here. What? Parts forming? Yes, parts forming. <laughs> I have to do that every time. So we're going to take this off. We're going to take this off. We're going to take this. We're going to rotate it around. So it unlocks. And all this is going to fall apart because it sucks, kind of. Okay, well, this is supposed to come off anyway, so just... There you go. Dump out the hand. There you go. Yay. Let's pull this off. There we go. Take the shoulder launchers off. Whoa! It popped right off. <laughs> Rotate that around here, so it locks, pull that off. Okay. So we got all that out of the way. I already took the sword off. The sword's just sitting off here to the side. Now we're going to move all this stuff off to the side for now. And we'll just focus on what you're going to do with Big Daddy Cool here to get him ready for a combination. So, basically, you got to bring these back. You're going to undo his waist. You're gonna bring this back the way you had it. This thing is squeaky as I don't know what. <laughs> Open that and now you're going to come in here. You basically have to come in through the other side here and push out the combined mode head that is on a slider. You're going to push that out. Rotate Diesel's head and you want to flip out M3's head like that. So there's a the combined mode head and then you can open up these little horns there you go. Once you've done that, you're going to take the shoulder assembly, you're going to bring it back down the way it was, and then you're going to have this, like, am I doing this right? Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm doing it right. Right? Yeah, I think. Uh, I've only done this once. Basically, you're going to rotate the hand like that, you're going to pull this back in, and yeah, 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 okay. So basically, you want to rotate this whole assembly. So this is now on the underside. So now you want this silver piece facing up. So you want it, you want it oriented like this. Now you can do the same thing over here. Just rotate the whole shoulder assembly down like that. Make sure that that, that silver piece is facing upward. Rotate the hand. Slide that over. Close all this up. Oop. Close all that up and rotate it like that. So now you got those pieces going. And now you're just going to bring them in, and this tab will tab into these slots right here. So you're just going to take it, tab it in, and make sure this little post here that the head is on goes into that little groove right there. It's basically supposed to fit right in there. I believe I got it. I think I got it. I think. I'm going to do the same thing here. Push that in. There you go. So now basically you have everything like that. And one thing that I've noticed on Diesel is he has some unnecessary ratchet joints and I... Oof, man. Unnecessary ratchet joints, but um, you're basically going to take this whole assembly here You're going to bring it up and you're going to rotate it at this point right here and This is one of these unnecessary ratchet joints because one This piece is really thin and you're putting some stress on this You know, you just want to make sure you grab it at the top Don't try to twist it like this because you will end up snapping that grab it from the top and twist it 
but yeah, that that's an unnecessary ratchet joint. Totally unnecessary, and frankly, dangerous. But, um, once you do that, you just want to take these, oh, you don't want to pop them off, but since they popped off anyway, might as well just leave them there, but Best you want to take these pieces here, rotate them back like that. You also want to take the whole waist assembly. Well, we'll do that next. You want to make sure you have clearance for everything here. So you basically want to take this whole assembly here, bring it up, and it will snap in in place, and that'll pop off again. Stupid bulge. Okay, you know what? Get, get. <laughs> Sometimes that just makes life a little easier if you just pop those off. Snap the waist into place like that, and you want to rotate the entire waist 180. So you got this big crotch piece here facing forward, and that came undone. Hey, you. Who told you you could do that, man? I didn't tell you you could do that. There we go. Oops. Oops. It's all coming apart, people. It's all coming apart. There we go. Okay. It is fiddly. I will say that. It's It's fiddly. Um, but basically now we'll just pop these back on, because now we need them. And basically you're just going to take them, and they will line up with some more tabs. You see there's a little tab right there, a little tab in right here. And just lock everything in place. Pop this one back on. And just tab everything into place, like so. So they got that configuration going. Now, for the legs. We'll get into some more unnecessary ratchet joints. We're going to come here. You want to bring this down. You want to bring this whole assembly the rest of the way up. So you're going to bend this up right here in this joint, like so. You basically want to open up this panel, too, because you're going to need to. Um, at this point, you're going to take the foot, and you're going to bring it down. And this, for some reason is on a ratchet joint. Don't know why. Totally unnecessary. Doesn't affect anything. But <laughs> it's on a ratchet joint. So you're basically going to take it and bring it around. And wait, I'm doing something wrong. Oh, okay. My fault. You want to bring this joint down like that. And then you're going to bring this up like that. I think I had it right the first time. Right? Oh, God. No, I had it right the first time. Arrgh! me and my brain sometimes my brain don't work people okay so you're gonna bring it up on this joint and then you're going to bring it over and this will tab in right there into the side of the window and again an un totally unnecessary ratchet joint there but it's there so now you have it in this configuration right here just like that once you do that you're going to take this whole assembly here and you're going to bring it up behind the thigh, like that, and this tab right here will tab in right there to lock everything in place. Doesn't lock in super secure, but it, it's there. So there, now you have that going on. There you got the first thigh done. So, second verse, same as the first, open that up, untab that, bring up this whole assembly, right here, and then bring it down on this joint, and then bring it up, and then swing this whole thing around, make sure your foot is facing up, and then bring it in, and tab it in right there. And then once you do that, bring that up, bind the leg, like that, and then tab slot. Booyah. There you go. So there you got the main bulk of him done and ready to go. Now, we're going to start bringing in all these other pieces. Yay, pieces. All right, so what you're going to do is you're going to take this bit right here. You're going to bring this up like that. You're going to untab these little side panels here. You're going to swing this whole thing around to the back. And it'll lock in. There's some little, little tabs right there for those slots. That'll lock in. 
fold these up and make sure these tabs interlock properly. So there you have that. Then take these side pieces here, bring them forward, they'll tab in together, and there you have a foot. And then you take one of the uh, shoulder launcher guns of doomage, and you'll see here that these two sets of guns right here will plug into these sets of ports right there. So line it up, push it in, there you go. Bring up that joint right there, and you're good to go. Second verse, same as the first. Take this, bring that up. Let's have these pieces, swing it around. Close up these panels. Close that up. Bring these feet around. Take the shoulder guns, plug it in like that. Bring up the connector, and there you go. And once you've done that, you're going to just line it up again. It has that same connector, so you just want to make sure you line it up. Get in there, which can be a bit of a pain. There you go. Plug it in and rotate it. That'll lock it in place. There you got one. Plug that one in. Rotate it, lock it into place, and there you go. So you get that good to go. And of course, for the chest piece, you're going to take this right here. You're going to take these wheels and swing them up. Flip in that handle. Flip that up. Flip these sets of wheels down. And this tab right here will tab in to this slot right here. So you just take that, line it up, plug it in, and there you go. You got the chest piece ready to go. Straighten some of this stuff out here. Make sure that's tabbed in right. Sometimes these like to come undone. So there you go. Now you're probably wondering, hey, where's the rest of the team? I'm go. where are they? Well, we're getting to that. We're going to get to that right now, actually. So basically, with Car Crash and T-Bone, you're going to put them back into their car modes. The only real prepping you have to do for, com for combination mode is to untab this section and just lift it up. That's all you got to do. That's your only responsibility. Just untab this section and lift that up. So they're ready to go. Yay. So basically, you're going to take Car Crash. And you'll see here, there are three ports and, I'm oh, sorry, three, three posts, rather. Three posts and one, two, three ports. So you just take it, line it up, and plug him on, and there you go. Second verse, same as the first. Take T-Bone, line everything up. Plug them on there. Make sure you're secure. And there you go. You got the legs all done. Now, of course, you can take these little side panels if you want and flare them out. Do what you want. I'm just kind of leaving them like that for now. But you do have some options there with those, uh, with those side pieces. So, now we're going to bring in Last Chance and Downforce. So, basically, what you're going to do to prep them is... You want the top half of them in vehicle mode and the bottom half in robot mode. That's basically all you have to do to get them prepped. So, once you do that, we'll take... Oop, make sure we've got the right, right hand here. You want to take a hand. You want to make sure that this is set like that, so the peg is uh, facing down. And you're just going to take it, you're going to plug it in right here, like that. And then just sandwich it in between the two legs. Like that. And just rotate it 90 degrees. So you have that orientation going on there. Open up the hands a little bit. And for his little pistol, you just take it and you just plug it in right here. For storage. So there you go. And then you take one of these pieces right here. And you'll see it has this little, uh, this little, this little floppy bit right here. And basically, this is going to 
lock in right here to these pieces on his waist. So you get in on one side, and you come around, and you get the other side locked in like that. So you got to go in like that. And you'll see here a post and two tabs, and you got a port and two slots right here. Just take it, push it in. And there you go. There you get your connector. So he's all good to go. And then you just take it. You have to plug it in. Again, you have to, to line line this up properly. Take it. Push it in. Rotate it to lock it in place. And there you go. Now he's got an arm. Yay, arms! Now, with last chance, same thing. You want the top half in vehicle mode and the bottom half in robot mode. Uh, the only real prepping you have to do for this piece is just kind of flip the feet back in like that and flip back in his heel spurs. So. Now he is ready for combination. So again, you're going to do the same thing with the fist. Just make sure that this piece is facing downward. And you're going to do the same thing. You're going to sandwich it in between these two posts right here. Like that. Whoa! Almost hurt myself there. <laughs> Toys are dangerous, people. Don't let anybody tell you a difference. They can be dangerous. They can be cold-blooded killers. So there you go. Plug all that in. Oop, there we go. Plug all that in. Rotate it 90 degrees. And there you go. Now, if you don't like the big gap that's happening here, that, I'm going to get a little more into that in a bit. But, you know, one way to kind of remedy that, if you want, is you can take these wheels and fold them in. But I kind of don't like the way that looks because it gives them this weird flat form. So I don't like that. But um, I'll, I'll get more into that in a, in a little bit. So, again, you want to take the little connector piece. And it works the exact same way. I'm just going to line it up here. With last chance's waist, plug it into that one. Make sure it's plugged into that side again. The three posts will plug in to their connective respective ports. Push it in, and there you go. We have them in arm mode. And you take them, plug them in, bring it down to lock it into place, and there you have it. Oh, and for storage, for his little pistol here, you can just take it and plug it into this tab right there for storage. Which is basically where you would store it in robot mode, so. You just store it right there. So he has a little shoulder pew pew pew. <laughs> little shoulder pea shooter. But basically, once you get everything all put together, there you have the Motor Squad. What the. What the I forgot what it's called already. What's it called? The Motor Squad Military Multiplexer, or M3, all combined, or not Motor Master, whatever you want to call it. And he looks cool. He looks awesome. I dig it. I dig it very much. A very, very, very cool combination, I will say. Let me get the camera up a little bit more. So we get a little more of a straight-on look at him here. There we go. But yeah. Very, very cool. Bring them in close here so you can get a good look at the head sculpt. Nice head sculpt. Really, really dig it. And yeah, again, all around, nicely done. Very cool. Dig it, dig it, dig it very much. He's got nice big heel spurs, so you don't have to worry about him falling over. It's very nicely done. I really, really like it. Now, one issue I have... With this is the handling of this big gap right here in the forearm. Now, obviously, this is the combined mode gun for Minosaur, for M3. You can take this handle, flip it around, it'll lock into place, and he can hold this as his gun, which is very cool. But the instructions tell you to take, let me just show you the instructions here. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. The instructions tell you to take 
this whole assembly here, which is basically what ends up plugging onto uh, the back of Motormaster's trailer in vehicle mode. Um, and they tell you to take this and plug it in here, and that fills in that gap. That's great, but all of this is now on the gun. So, one way I thought, I, I figured they were trying to remedy this, is that they send you an extra, this extra piece. Which is not the whole thing, it's just one part of it. And um, at first I was wondering, why, why did they send me an extra one of these? And I think maybe that was the reason. Because you can't take it and plug it in. But the problem is, it only fills in half of the gap. Because you need the other pieces to fill in the rest of the gap. So, you're still kind of screwed there. And, um, that kind of sucks. But really, what's intended is to unplug that, unplug that. Take these off. Uh, oh yeah. Undo this piece. Come on. And basically, you're going to take all this and put it back together. So basically, you'll take this piece, that'll slot in there, you'll take this piece, and it'll slot in right on top of this, and then you take the barrel, and it clips in right there. So there you go. And then you can take this, plug it into the forearm, and you see how now it covers up that whole gap. That's great, but now you can't use the combined mode gun. So. It kind of leaves you with that, it leaves you with a dilemma of, well, if you want to use the combined mode gun, then you're going to have a big gap in the forearm, but if you don't want a big gap in the forearm, you can't use the combined mode gun. And that kind of sucks. Um, really, they needed to give us a whole nother set instead of just a one piece, because this alone, um, this alone doesn't cover up that whole gap. And again, like I said, you can flip the wheels in, but I don't like the way that looks because it just makes his form look flat and weird. So I do like it a lot better that way, but then you end up not being able to use the combined mode gun, and that sucks. But you do end up with the two shotguns, and you do have storage for these. And you basically have these triangular slots right here that will plug in right there. So you just take them, plug them in. Like that. And plug it into the other side. And there you go. Now for the sword, you do have your storage here. Again, you have this tab right here. Tab it into the slot on the sword, if I can. It's unmoved. It's unmoved on me, that's why it's not working right. I'll try it on this side. You can plug it into either side. Come on, man. Come on, man. There you go. So you can plug the sword in there for storage if you want. But, of course... I want the big guy holding his sword. Hit it. What's up there? What? What is... Hey. Eyes forward. <laughs> he got distracted by something. It's like, squirrel! What? I don't know. I don't know what happened there. But, um... Yeah, of course, he can hold his sword. And you see there's a slot right there. And there's a tab on the inside of his palm. So you just tab the sword in. Wrap his fingers around the sword. And he looks awesome! Wielding his ginormic sword. Really dig that. Dig that very, very much. So, yeah. Very, very cool. Digging it. Digging it very much. Articulation-wise, in the combined mode. Uh, the head is on a ball joint, but it's a really tight ball joint. You can look up and down. Uh, the uh, shoulders can do a full 360. It can go in and out on, the, on this joint and this joint here. So there are two separate joints. You do get... Of course, your biceps will. You do get a double jointed elbow due to the way that works. You do get a wrist swivel. Uh, the fingers, the thumb is on a ball joint and a joint right here, and each finger is on a ball joint as well as a joint on the knuckle. You do get a waist joint, a clackety waist joint. Uh, legs can go forward, they can go back, they can go in and out. You do get a thigh swivel as well as a swivel at the uh, knee connection itself. You do get a bit of knee movement here. That's about as much as you can get. And this came untapped again. And the feet are on ball joints. Nice ball joints. You get some good tilting action there. So, he is quite posable. 
get him standing straight. Stand, man! Stand! I command you! I command you! You follow my commands! He's dipping a little bit. Why are you dipping forward, man? What the hell? There we go. There we go. But yeah, he is he is definitely very, very cool. Now, for comparison, we will bring in our good buddy here. Hey, look, the Generations Bumblebee. I'm going to stand him up right here and again, you know, he's, look, he's not even in frame. <laughs> there he is with Generations Bumblebee. Just so you can get that sense there of scale. And here he is with Classics Prime. Again, so you can just get that sense of scale. And here he is with LG1 Menasaur. Ah, oh, precious. So very precious. Oh. So there you have that. And we'll bring in some other combiners here. Here he is with Fens Projects Colossus or not Bruticus. So you can see how they look together. So there you go. And you see that uh, M3 is a bit taller at the head than Colossus, not Bruticus. So, there you have that. And I'm sure everybody's going to ask, so I'll do it. Here he is next to Hercules. So there it goes, those two together. A little shorter than Hercules, but still cool nonetheless. So, there you go. Um, final thoughts. Uh, really, really cool. Um, really digging it. Um, you know, I mean, all the, 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 the four limb, uh, the four limb robots are really good figures. Um, they they kind of dropped the ball a little bit with Diesel because he is really fiddly. And he has a lot of unnecessary ratchet joints. I, I, I'm not lying. He, <laughs> he just has some unnecessary ratchet joints. Um, but get this pegged in back together. Oh, things are falling apart. Don't fall apart on me when I'm trying to wrap things up, man. Jeez, I was just trying to fix some things. Um, but yeah, Diesel is a little bit on the fiddly side, so it kind of makes things a little frustrating. But, um, all in all, though, you know, the, the finished product looks amazing. I mean, this looks so, so cool. So, you know, it, it, it can make me overlook those little nitpicks. Um, one thing that does really suck is the whole, you know, the way they dealt with this. I, I don't like that. It would have been cool if I could have the combined mode rifle and the sword and still be able to fill in this gap on his forearm. But, um, you know, it is what it is. Like I said, this still looks really freaking cool. It looks amazing. I love it. I'm a big Stunticon fan, so to me, this updated version of the Stunticons and of Menasaur, it, it still hits all the right marks for me. It just, it, it tingles me down in my fun place, and I really, really like it. And um, definitely worth picking up. I, I really do think this is worth your time. If, you, if you're into Combiners, if you're into the Stunticons, this is definitely a set that you need to have in your collection. This is very, very cool. And, uh, you know, all in all, though, for the most part, Fans Project did a, a really good job with the set. So, I can't complain too much. But, um, yeah, that's it. I hope you enjoyed this uh, multi, multi-part review here of Fans Project's Motor Squad. So, don't forget to check out M Games, check out Lori Plan, follow me on Twitter, all of that good stuff down in the description below. And I think that's pretty much all there is to say. So, there is Fans Project's M3, and this is MGO saying, remember, you don't stop playing because you grow old, you grow old because you stop playing. Be a geek, be a proud, palm in your face! <laughs> You know, all I hear day and night, night and day, is how cool the Constructicons are. Oh, the Constructicons are so cool. Oh, they get to be in movies and they're the best combiner team ever. Devastator is so awesome. Blah, 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 blah. Bruticus wasn't video game. Shut up. See, that's what I'm talking about. Where's our love? Where's the love of the Stunticons, man? We're just as cool as any of you. Hey, guys. How's it going?
Hey, we were just talking about you, about how uh, happy we are about all the publicity you've been getting. It's just really cool, man. It's awesome. Really happy for you. Well, thanks. Thanks a lot. But you know how it is. It's a, it's a team effort. We all have to do this together. Now, folks, excuse me. I'm, uh, I'm going to go kill some stuff. See ya. I freaking hate that guy. You know that? I hate him. I hate him so much. You know he could kill you. Usually. Yeah, I know, and that makes me even matter.